Welcome to part 4 of my build of the quarter scale Jerry Bates Cessna 172 Skyhawk. This video is a slideshow with a voiceover of some pictures I took while building it. Day 19. I began the day by finishing the planking on the top corners of the fuselage. Then I took my time doing the planking on the lower corners. These are a bit more acute than the upper ones and so I used 5mm planks instead of the 10mm ones I have been using. It is coming along slowly but is extremely enjoyable. Day 20. I have nearly finished planking the fuselage but so the plywood side windows casing can fit in it had to be cut to the right shape. I decided to start putting the wings together. Then I discovered that ribs W2A were not correct. The space for the flap cove had not been cut out. I used another rib W2 and traced the shapes and then removed them. Then I had to laminate ribs W2A and W2C, as well as W2A and W2B. From rib W1 to W5 there is a ply wing brace. From W5 to W11 there is a web that I cut from the correct width from 2.5mm balsa. These will position the ribs as the plan is not correct and cannot be used as a reference when the wings are glued together. I dry fitted the complete wing together. Everything fit very well. Next time I will bring my squares and use them to position the ribs correctly. These are the wing strut mounts. They fit between two W2 ribs. Day 21. And so we put glue to the wing. The wing ribs are slotted under the wing brace, so they have to be added in the air and then placed on the wing spar. Here we have all the ribs in place along with the spars, webs, sub-leading edge and various strengtheners. This takes a good while to complete so the glue better not harden too much in the meanwhile. Steel blocks are used to hold the ribs down and in the correct place along with a metal ruler to see to it that the wing spar is straight and correct. Now we can make up the servo compartments, one for the flap and one for the aileron. The last to go on is the trailing edge of the wing where the aileron attaches. Now this can all harden well and good before we start making the lower wing skin. Day 22. I made up the servo covers from 1.5mm plywood and 1mm balsa. This makes up the equivalent of the 2.5mm balsa skin. I used epoxy glue for this as wood glue has water in it and warps glue ups like these. I put plastic electrical conduits that I got for free in the wing for the servo wires. The instructions recommended rocket tubes but these are not available where I live in Iceland. The holes in the ribs are 17.4 millimeters and the tubes are 16 millimeters. They can be fastened quite rigidly with polyurethane glue. I glued together the skin for this underside using three complete balsa boards. This I then glued to the wing ribs using PU glue. Weights and clamps hold them down while the glue takes. Day 23. I screwed the hatches down on the wing and then cut the balsa skin from under them. That way the fit is as good as it gets. Here we have the right aileron being built. They seem very simple and easy. The flap cove is covered with a piece of 0.4mm plywood. 
The tape is there because of a crack in the ply. I will remove it when the wing is ready to cover with glass fiber. Now I have to wait for Robart to send me the special flap hinges needed for this wing. The flaps will stick out of the plywood covering. And the flaps can also be started. I cannot finish them until I get the hinges. Day 24. Sometimes you work and work all day at building a model, but nobody can see that you did anything. Here is an example. I assembled the left aileron, and this time I remembered to add a hardwood block for the control horn. I forgot this in the right aileron, so I had to cut it open and add the block. I added the upper skin to both flaps and left aileron, so now the control surfaces are all but ready. I need special hinges from Robot, but they don't seem to realize that I ordered from them. I cannot add the front skin of the flaps until I have added the hinges. <laughs>